Hey! With let, we can declare and assign local variables in our template. That's right, I said template. The let declaration, introduced in Angular 18.1, was a frequently requested template feature. In this video, we'll look at the let declaration syntax, walk through some common scenarios, and evaluate some early best practices for using let. Let's take a look. We can use let anywhere in our templates. The let declaration begins with the let keyword and a variable name, then an equals and an angular expression. That expression can be multi-line. We terminate the let with a semicolon. We can't modify the let variable once it's set, but it does update when the view re-renders. The variable is scoped to the HTML element, or block, containing the declaration. We can only reference the variable below its declaration. When would let be useful in a template? Let's walk through some scenarios. I'm in Stacklets, looking at a sample application. Here's a list of snacks and their prices. Notice that the prices are styled based on the quantity in stock. Click on a snack, and we see snack details. The quantity in stock is color-coded. Clicking on the Change Price button, we see the price change both in the list above and in the detail here. Looking at the HTML, this for block loops through each snack item in the list and displays it. Notice that we reference the snack item dot number in stock expression several times in this for block. Same with the snack item dot price. Let's declare variables instead. Inside the for block, declare a variable at let qty equals snack item dot number in stock semicolon and at let price equals snack item dot price semicolon. Now we can use these variables within the for block. Replace the longer expressions with the shorter variable names. I'll use qty here and here and replace this longer expression with price here and here. That looks better. Looking at the preview, the price is still formatted correctly. Using the let declaration as an alias for a complex expression can significantly improve the readability of the template. This is especially true if you have complex state, such as snack item dot supplier dot address dot street, snack item dot supplier dot address dot city, and so on. We can also add pipes to our declarations. As an example, let's delete the currency pipe from the interpolation binding here and here. We see that the price is no longer formatted as a currency. Now let's add the currency pipe to our price declaration. And it's formatted as a currency. Slick! Adding a pipe to a declaration is especially useful when the value is displayed multiple times, because we only need to define and execute the pipe once on the declaration. Scrolling down, this if block demonstrates one of the downsides of using signals. We check whether the signal is null or undefined here, but because we read the signal again here, it can be null or undefined on this read. So we need the optional chaining operator, the question mark before the dot, to only access the object's property if the object isn't null. Basically, type narrowing doesn't work with signals here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could read the signal once into a variable, then just reference that variable? Well, now with the let declaration, we can. At let snack equals selected snack and open the box to read the signal, semicolon. This variable holds the snack, or undefined if there is no selected snack. Now we can replace the selected snack signal with our snack variable here, and in each of our bindings. I'll select the first binding, and we no longer need the optional chaining operator. Control shift l to select each occurrence, then type snack, and press Escape. Yep, much better. In the preview window, click on an item to ensure the detail works. Looks good. And pick another one. 
Yep, the detail still displays correctly. Looking back at the HTML, we are again repeating number in stock here. Scrolling up, we've defined a variable to hold the number in stock. Let's use that variable here and here. And we don't need the nullish coalescing operator, the two question marks. But we see an error. QTY does not exist. Any idea why? Well, we declared the QTY variable here within the for block, so that variable is only available within that for block. Scrolling back down, let's declare a variable within our if block. We can even use the same name if we'd like, because this variable is scoped to only our if block. Then we use our snack variable and reference the number in stock property, semicolon. In the preview window, click a snack, and the styling is correct. Pick another one, and the style color displays appropriately. Even with that change, this is some ugly looking code. What's this even doing? Wouldn't it be nicer to store all of this in a variable? Declare a variable at let qty style equal. We have two options for defining a style variable. We can use the ternary operator as we do here. I'll copy the expression out of the quotes, paste it, reformat a bit, and add a semicolon. Then set the ng class binding to the variable name, qty style, and I'll reformat a bit. Shall we see if it works? Click a snack, and the style is correct. Pick another one, and it looks good. But it's still not easy to see what's going on here with this double ternary operator. Another option when defining a style is to use object syntax. Depending on the style rules, that syntax may be more readable. I'll comment out our original variable and declare it again at let qty style equals curly braces to define an object semicolon. I'll paste the object properties. This defines each style as a property and the expression as the value. When the expression is true, that style is used. So we set the out of stock if the quantity is zero, low stock if the quantity is less than 10, and good stock if the quantity is greater than or equal to 10. That's definitely clearer to read. Does it still work? Select a snack, then another one, and one more. Yep, it works. And look at what that's done for our template readability. This last one is a bit more iffy. Say that for each snack item, we want to display the total cost for buying the full quantity in stock. We could add a property to our snack interface for this calculated value. And some would argue that this is the correct way to implement this feature. But now with let, we can also implement it directly in the template. At let all price equals, we already have the quantity in a variable, so qty times, and we reference snack.price. We can add a currency pipe to format it as a currency, semicolon. Then in the detail div element, we display all price. I'll paste it in. Now click a snack. And we see the cost for the quantity in stock. $5 times 12 in stock is 60. It works. Click another one. Looks right. To confirm that our signals re-render appropriately when changed, click Change Price to update the price. Notice that it updates the price here in the list and here in the detail. And it recalculates the cost for all. Sweet. Instead of performing the calculation directly, we could call a method in the component from our template. In the component, I'll create a method called calculate all price. It takes in a snack of type snack and returns the number in stock times the price. Going back to the template, I'll comment out this variable then declare an all price variable that calls our calculate all price method, passing in the snack, and end with a semicolon. I'll add the currency pipe for formatting. Will that work? Click on a snack 
and we see the cost for all correctly calculated and formatted as a currency. Click on another one, and it works. Cool! But should we add calculations and other business logic to our templates? Is it okay to perform interim calculations in a for block? How about if the assignment calls a method in the component? Where you draw the line for use of the let declaration is up to you and your team. Here are my current best practices when using the let declaration. Use let to minimize repetition, like we did here for the number in stock and price. And it can minimize the number of times a pipe is executed. Use let to better handle type narrowing, especially when using signals. Let is great for defining complex style options like these. And the best part of all is that let can improve readability in the template. Though not shown here, let is also great for minimizing subscriptions when using the async pipe. And we can use a let variable to pass data in an event handler, such as a click event. Consider carefully when to use let for calculations or other business rules. Will developers after you, or even your future self, remember where you put that logic? What about let versus the if block as clause? The Angular team recommends using let instead of as whenever possible, especially as you move to signals. So, use the let declaration when it simplifies your template and makes sense for your project. What are your thoughts on let? Find any other uses for it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. It would be great if you would like and subscribe.